hello and welcome to today's video today i'm going to share my design for a simply knitting magazine 248 which is in the shops in the uk at the moment i think and it was in the shops when i filmed this but i'm not sure how long it's been in the shops for so hopefully you can still find it in the shops if not you should probably be able to pick it up online i'm going to show you a video that i filmed before i sent a sample off to the magazine last september and I'm also going to show you a little glimpse of what's in the actual magazine and what the sample looks like on the model. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I saw yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So I'm going to go back to last September and show you what the sample looked like in person before I sent it off to the magazine and then I'll come back and show you the magazine. First let's talk about how this sweater is constructed and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, the yarn as well. So this um, sweater has cables on the body. It is worked on a stocking stitch background uh, which makes the cables a bit more subtle. It, normally with cable designs you have pearl columns in between so it creates like a cable rib pattern. With this one I decided just to use stocking stitch and the cable, every other row of cable twists the opposite direction so it kind of gives it a slightly wavy look. The sweater is worked in the round from the bottom up so you cast them for the hem and you work to the underarms in the round so there's loads of plain knit rounds in between the cable rounds and then you, when you get to the underarms you split front and back, you work front separately, back separately and then when you get to the shoulders you join them by working a three needle cast off and this sweater has dropped shoulders, um, so there is no shaping around the armhole. When you finished joining the shoulders uh, using a three needle cast off up here, you will then pick up stitches around the armhole and work the sleeves from the top down. And the sleeves are just plain stocking stitch. I like working the sleeves from the top down like this because it means you don't have any sewing up to do afterwards. And in fact, once you finish knitting this, all you need to do is weave in the ends and then block it. More about blocking in a minute. Um, if you want to mix and match sizing, so for example, if you feel like you need a bigger, a deeper armhole, you can always sub in a armhole from a larger size or a smaller size. Because there's no shaping around the armhole, it's very easy to knit the armhole and the sleeves for, for a large and sm or smaller size and mix it in with what you're already knitting. Just mark in the pattern where you're doing and check your measurements very carefully. And let's take a look at the back. Oh, I've just noticed. I tend to ask my sample knitters to mark where they um, split for the front and the back or where the underarm is because it makes it easier to measure. And I took out the one on the front, but I forgot the one on the back. Okay. So this is what the back looks like. So the same pattern as the front. So it's an all round pattern. Just lift that up. So you can see there's no seam at the side there and then it has this quite um, high round neckline. It has got a stitch at the hems both at the bottom of the body and at the bottom of the sleeves and around the neckline. Um, stitches are picked up around the neckline um, when you finish the rest of the body. So you put the stitches on hold at the front and the back of the neck, pick up the stitches at the sides and you knit the neck in the round. So it's quite um little finishing to do on this as i said earlier once you finished it you just have to weave in the ends and then block it the yarn this is knitted in is a uh, sheepies sheepies it's not pronounced sheepies i think it's close to sheepies but i'm it's not i'm not getting it completely right i've had a lesson in how to pronounce it and i still can't pronounce it um but sheepies marina soft this is a yarn i've used on quite a few occasions now for several different magazines and I really like knitting with it. My sample knitter actually knitted this for me so I didn't knit this but um, I have knitted other designs using this yarn and I really really like it. It's very smooth and very soft. Um, it is slightly I would say slightly loosely spun so you do have to be careful and make sure you don't split the, split the yarn because that can happen. Uh, it is 50% superwash merino wool, 25% microfiber, 25% acrylic and it is a DK weight and it comes in a huge range of colours. 
So if this color isn't your thing, then I'm sure you'll find something else that you like. Um, as I said, I've used this yarn for quite a few different magazines now, and I really like it. It's incredibly soft. One thing I would say to be careful about is if you decide to steam press it. So when you come to block it, you can either soak it in lukewarm water with a bit of a wash, squeeze it out into a thick towel. I tend to roll it up into one towel, squeeze out, squeeze out as much water as I can, and then I tend to roll it up into a, a, a new dry towel as well and squeeze up more water. So I get as much water out of it as possible. And then you uh, lay it flat on a um, surface. I use my dining room table with blocking mats. You can use a towel, you can use, put it on the floor. Just make sure that the surface isn't going to get wet. And then you just smooth it out to the right size and shape. You can pin it. Use blocking wires and pins to pin it in place if you want to, or you can just smooth it out. What I actually decided to do with this, because of a little bit of a time issue, I am actually getting ready to leave for Yarndale. So this is being filmed in September, which I think I said at the beginning, and I'm leaving for Yarndale in two days. So I had to actually finish this slightly earlier than my deadline. Um, and because of just everything going on, I decided to steam press it rather than uh, wet block it. When you steam press, you hold the iron as close as you can to your fabric without touching it. So you don't press it down. You just want to hover above it as close as you can without touching it and then press the steam button. Unless you've got one of those fancy steamers that you can just hang it up and then steam it. I've never tried those. I kind of want to buy one, but I don't know. Let me know if you think they're worth it and what brand um, is best to get. Because I tried one years ago and it was rubbish. So... Um, I decided to steam press it, so I put it on my, on my um, ironing board and a couple of places I accidentally touched the fabric and um, there's a tiny bit, a little bit of a mark I noticed up here when I was measuring it where it looked like I just brushed it with the um, iron. So do be careful using a hot iron on it. It actually does say on the label not to use an iron on it, so do be careful with that. After you wash it, if you just lay it flat and smooth it out, that should hopefully be um, enough. So this has not been wet blocked, this has just been steam pressed, but do be careful. I didn't look at this before I did that, but be very, very careful if you go near it with an iron. Don't touch the fabric with the iron. I think that is because it has the acrylic in it, uh, so be very, very careful. Okay, so let's have a look at the magazine. So my sample is actually in the little extra leaflet. So it's called the Cable Collection and it is three cable patterns. So that's my sweater. There's a hat and there's a little uh, girl's sweater. So the hat is by Julie Bernard, who used to be the editor of uh, The Knitter. And, yeah, The Knitter, I think, when he first started um, quite a few years ago now. So that is my sample, that's what it looks like, modelled, I think that's, oh no, there's a couple more pictures here, so let me try and show you this without showing you the actual pattern, so that's the back, and that's, so the side view and a few details, and that's, that's a bit of a close-up. So it features a cable, but it's on a, a sock and stitch background. So that is what it looks like. So let me show you what else is in the magazine quickly. I only picked this magazine up yesterday, so I haven't had time to look at it properly yet. But there's a little purse thingy at the back, which is a bit of a fun thing to knit. There are some accessories. Oh, that's a gorgeous sweater. That's fun. As for Joe Allport, there's a yoga mat bag. There's some other accessories like a fun little teapot, some kids' stuff, some toys, some Easter stuff, because Easter is right around the corner. Little tiny Easter design, so you can probably knit up fairly quickly. Yarn reviews, stripey sweater with mismatched stripes. I really like that. That's very nice. That's, that's by Martin Story. So that's for Rowan. Uh, Rowan. A men's sweater. Very nice. That's by Pat Mancini. Little kids sweater. By Sean Brown. Some socks. And then the design that's on the cover, which is really nice. 
I do like that. That is lovely. That's the cover design, and that is by Sean Brown as well. And then there's some like news pages and, and things like that. So that's issue 248 of Simply Knitting Magazine. I think it's in the shops in the UK still. Um, hopefully. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And let me know whether you have got this issue or what you think of it. What you think of the design. Have you tried Skeppi's Marina Soft, I think it's called? Um, let me know if you've tried it. I've knitted a few things in it now and I really quite like it. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.